I am here to set the record straight because the entire internet seems to think that they're all going to evolve into crab, that everything is ultimately moving towards crab, and that crab is the ultimate life form. No, you're not turning into a crab. I'm sorry. I know you might have been having a bad day and that I just made it worse, but you're not going to become a crab. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you why you will not turn into crab. And hopefully by the end, you will realize no crab for you. You're not becoming a crab. I'm sorry. Am I? Anyway, what is carcinization? Why is the internet fascinated with carcinization and becoming crab? Why is crab the ultimate life form? And can we learn... My cat is destroying things. Can we learn a little bit about biology in this whole debacle? Yes. Carcinization refers to the phenomenon where over time, at least five groups within Decapoda have evolved crab-like body forms. What does that mean? So first, we need to establish what all of these different terms mean. When I'm talking about Decapoda, Decapoda is an order within Crustacea, and Crustacea is within the phylum Arthropoda. You, if you are a human watching this, are not an Arthropoda. You are in Chordata, which is quite different than Arthropoda. Let's list the reasons why. These different taxonomic groups that we're talking about are ultimately a hypothesis. We get these data from a couple of different things. We can look at morphological traits. So these are traits that are physical traits about an organism that we can measure. And then we can also use genetics to determine which groups of species are more closely related to others, or which groups in general are more closely related to one another, and what phylum do they fall in, phyla is the plural, all of that fun stuff. But before we can even start going further, Let's try to remember what a phylum is, what a class is. In the taxonomic scheme, we start all the way at the top with domain, and then we move all the way down to species. The way that you can remember it is, did King Philip come over for grape soda? So it's did, domain, king, kingdom, that's easy. Philip is phylum, phyla is plural, Come is class, over is order, four is family, G is genus, soda is species. When you have an organism, you have the genus and then the species. The genus usually has lots of groups in it. Species, there's only one. Here's a good example. There's the scientific fish, boops, boops. It's not pronounced that way, but that's the best way to pronounce it. That's the fun way. Boops is both the genus and the species name. Mola Mola is another example of this, but you have Mola as the first part and then Mola as the species name. So there are multiple Molas, but only one Mola Mola. So now you're probably asking, how does that apply to carcinization? Crabs are all in the phylum Arthropoda. You, if you're a human watching this, are in the phylum Chordata. The only way that carcinization happens is within phylum Arthropoda, in those that are crustaceans, and within the order Decapoda. So it's limited only to Decapoda. You are all the way over here in the phylum Chordata. So you're definitely not a Decapod, and you're certainly not an Arthropod, which means that you cannot become crab. Because again, carcinization, the process of becoming crab, separate groups over time, becoming crab, only happens in Decapoda, which you are not in. So that's your strike number one. Carcinization is actually a type of convergent evolution. Convergent evolution occurs when groups that are different from one another all evolve the same type of function or the same type of organ or the same type of wings or the same kind of body like the crabs are doing. A great example of this is butterflies have wings, Birds have wings and bats have wings. They are not closely related. They are all different groups. Butterflies are invertebrates, bats are mammals, birds are birds. Those are not closely related. 
However, they were under similar selective pressures from their environment that caused them to be better suited to have wings. Wings was the better option, so they evolved that. Another caveat, you don't evolve. Individuals cannot evolve. Natural selection acts on individuals and then the group itself can evolve over time. And this happens very, very slowly. So even if carcinization was happening in humans, you would not be around to see it most likely. Another thing that's really important for us to mention when it comes to carcinization is that natural selection and evolution don't have any goals. There's no ultimate form anywhere. Evolution doesn't have a goal. Natural selection doesn't have a goal. Everybody likes to think of natural selection and evolution as this overlord god. It's like this puppeteer that is controlling everything and making decisions about you get to survive and you get to survive and you get to survive, but you, not you, you don't survive. That's not how it works. It's just a process. And since there's no overlord, natural selection and evolution are just processes that are occurring with no goals, and therefore crab cannot be the ultimate form because there's no such thing as an ultimate form. Take, for example, koalas. Koalas don't make a lot of sense because they spend the vast majority of their time and energy trying to digest something that is poisonous to them and takes a very long time to ferment so they can even get any of the nutrients out of that. There is no ultimate life form in that example. Right now, you can see these a lot better than you can the white chocolate chips. So over time, these would likely be selected out because a predator can see these a lot more easily than it can the white chocolate chips. Now, sometimes these might still get got for other reasons, but for the most part, over time, the ratio of the dark chocolate chips to the white chocolate chips is going to change over time. We call this evolution because it's a change in allele frequency over time within our population. But let's say that now our environment changes. So originally, so originally we had a light environment and now we live in a dark environment. That means that the highest fitness is going to go towards the darker chocolate chips because they're harder to see. So over time, even though we may start off with equal numbers of white versus the dark chocolate chips, it's going to be easier for a predator to select out the white ones, right? And so over time, the frequency of the white ones is going to change. This is natural selection, selecting these out. And then the change in our gene pool represents evolution. Taking it back to carcinization, what this means is that natural selection was acting on these different groups of crabs based on the environment that they were in. So whatever environment that they were in, if they had a crab-like body form, they were more likely to survive. So in this case, they might have been like the dark chocolate chips. If they were crab-like body form, within whatever environment that made it better for them to be that crab-like body form. Then they lived long enough to reproduce. Natural selection favored them. They had higher fitness. And so over time, they, as a group, evolved the more crab-like body form. With carcinization, the crab-like body form evolved five separate times. So we call that independently evolved. What that means is that these were different groups and they weren't evolving together or because of one another, they just all happened to evolve that crab-like body form as a group, not an individual, because that was what worked the best. So for example, whatever selective pressures that they're under from their environment made it so that the crab-like body form was the most successful, gave them the highest fitness, the best chance to be able to reproduce and pass on their genes to the next generation, and so five separate groups independently evolved a crab-like body. A good example of this is if you and a friend are going to a dance, but you don't tell each other what you're going to wear. There's a specific dress code for this dance, and you also have to wear a specific color. So that means that you have constraints. 
there's only certain things that you can wear. And let's say that you only have two stores within your area. You go and buy your dress in that color, and then someone else goes and buys their dress in the color. And then the both of you show up wearing the same dress. You didn't communicate about this beforehand, but given all of the constraints that you had, there were only two stores, you could only wear one color, and then you had a specific dress code, you both came to the same conclusion, but you probably did it in different ways. You might have done it on different days. You might have done one person with a coupon and one without. You might have asked your mom. They might have asked no one. There's different ways, but you're all getting to the same conclusion. It's a similar concept with convergent evolution and also with carcinization. However, remember the key here is that you don't have the same selective pressures as crafts that are going to force the human species as a group to evolve a crab-like body shape. You also have to already have the equipment available to be able to do that. You don't have, as we mentioned, a carapace or chelipeds or an exoskeleton. They do. Going back to our dress example, if you're somebody that lives out of the state, and you're given the options of what you're supposed to do to this, but you can't even drive to the state in the first place, and you don't have the same stores, and you weren't given what color you were supposed to wear, you're not going to be able to come to the same conclusion. If you were even able to come, you'd probably have a different colored dress from a different store. So there's no way that you can evolve into crab because one, you, you as an individual, can't evolve. You can only be acted upon by natural selection, and you don't have the crab-like body form equipment because you're not a crab. You're human, probably, maybe. Also, if we evolved to become a crab, we would be an imposter crab and not a real crab because there is only one group of true crabs, the brachyurans. Everyone else is an imposter. For example, hermit crabs. Hermit crabs are not real crabs. We call them that. They are crustaceans within Decapoda, and they have evolved a somewhat crab-like body structure, and they look like crabs, but they are not crabs. Another really good example of this are porcelain crabs. Porcelain crabs really do look like crabs. They have the crab-like body shape. They have the chelipeds that can do this. However, they are not crabs. They are, again, imposters that independently evolved as a group to resemble crabs because that was just the way that it worked for them to be able to survive. At the end of the day, it is all fun and jokes, but it's important to remember that there are real world consequences to thinking that there is an ultimate life form or that some are better than others. Those are roads we don't want to go down. No life is better than another life. There's no form that's better than the other. Everything is just doing the best that it can. So remember, you will not turn into crab. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but you needed to hear it. Not everything is crab. Only some things are crabs and not you.